Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Sheedy. I've been in practice for over 20 years here in uh, Orange County, California at uh, OC Surgical Eye Institute. And I've been using amniotic membrane for about 17 years now. Use many products, many different types and brands, different thicknesses and sizes. Uh, currently, I've been very impressed with using a dual layer uh, amniotic membrane from Ophthalogix. Uh, the one I've been happy with these days is uh, this one here, it uh, has uh, increased number of cytokines and growth factors and especially it's very easy to handle. It's a little bit more rigid and it goes on the eye a little bit uh, easier than some of the other products I've used. So this is what I'm using now. Um, I have a uh, cornea practice and I treat a lot of persistent epithelial defects. I have patients with neurotropic keratitis and sometimes people just need to recover after having a bad ulcer uh, once that's uh, quiet. And I've moved toward using in-office procedures as opposed to taking them to the operating room for the ease and comfort of the patient and also for the, the great outcomes that have been occurring with uh, placing amniotic membranes on the surface. It really helps. It's uh, revolutionary actually and it has uh, really changed the, the healing time that I see in my patients where I treat them simply with just topical medications. I'm here to uh, place an amniotic membrane from Ophthalogix. It's a dual layer, 10 millimeter diameter size membrane. Uh, our patient here suffers from a persistent epithelial defect. She has neurotropic keratitis. Uh, she's on autologous serum, a 50% mixture four times a day. She's on ointment at bedtime. She's on lubricants in the day. And despite that, she's starting to develop a little bit of haze and scarring on a persistent defect, which has been there for over a week. So we're going to assist that healing without going to the operating room and doing it here in the office with a simple office procedure. I've chosen specifically a dual layer ophthalmologics uh, membrane and it comes in a pre-packaged uh, sterile packet which you just tear open. And you'll have two packets in here. One is the information card for the product and the other one is the actual membrane. So initially when we start, we like to anesthetize the eye. So I'll put a drop of tetracaine in. Have you look up for me? Good, and look down. And it's good to let the patient know once in a while that there is some discomfort with the tetracaine as it does burn. Did you feel a little burn in there? No. Okay, I'm very good at it, so that's why uh, I don't burn when I put in my patients. So we have everything set up here. Essentially we have our membrane from Ophthalogix, dual layer, 10 millimeter. We have an eyelid speculum, uh, forceps, and then we have some wet cell sponges when we need to dry because we want to place it on just right so that way it sticks to the cornea. So we'll gain access by placing a Lieberman eyelid speculum into the left eye. Have you look up for me. This is just an eyelid protector. That's what I tell my patients. And then they kind of understand what an eyelid protector is because if you say, uh, Eyelid speculum, sometimes they, they think of other types of speculums and they, they don't like that. But it's very comfortable. Are you in any discomfort at all? No. Excellent, excellent. So we have that exposed. We have our membrane. Comes in a sterile processed uh, pouch. And essentially we just open it very carefully. Um, what I like about this particular membrane, it's a, since it's dual layer, it's a little bit more rigid. And it doesn't fold over when um, it's grasped. So it has, uh, it sort of maintains its shape a little better without rolling up or causing any type of folding. Very nice. Get my sterile forceps here. And since it is dual layer, there's no misinterpretation of which side we're going to place it on. So we'll come here, we'll ask the patient to focus straight ahead right here toward my finger. Good. And then we'll place it exactly right there on the cornea. And as we place it down, it'll stick. Very nice. And as you can see, it adheres very well. And just to make sure, I like to confirm that there's no air bubbles underneath. So I'll take a, a wet cell sponge, which is dry, and I'll just smooth it out. And I'll go centrally to peripheral in order to get all the air bubbles out and make it nice and smooth and have it stick. So right now, as you can see, 
it's adherent to the cornea, it's covered it, and as time goes by, it'll become more translucent, so it won't be as blurry for the patient. So there we go, we got all our air bubbles out. Mission accomplished. We will place a bandage soft contact lens atop the eye, and depending on the size of the graft you use, will determine the size of the contact lens. And just look straight ahead for me. So as you can see, the graft became much clearer now that it's moistened. It's still adherent. I could see its position. It's very well. And our contact lens covers the entire graft. Now we're going to remove the speculum. And for this part, you'll slowly Release the tension, hold the lower lid down, remove the lower end, and then ask the patient to gently close their eyes and keep closed. And you want her to have the eye closed and maintain it in that position without moving the eye around for about five minutes. Just close both eyes and relax. And the procedure is now completed. Uh, I will do the paperwork, fill out the op report while here in the room with the patient, and then come back, look at her under the slit lamp, and confirm that our graft is in place and the bandage soft contact lens is covering it in its entirety. Place the patient on topical antibiotics and see them back in a week. Thank you.